Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies. This is another installment of our one-on-one -on -one lecture series where we take a look at some of the programs available to you as a prospective student at the Cipriani College. I am Ian Daniel. I am the head of labor studies. And so today's session looks at the labor studies department. Um, this series is a little bit different because it's actually one on two. I have with me today two of our students who hopefully will do the majority of talking about our program. We have one graduate, Mr. Kern Duncan, and we have one continuing study, um, continuing student, Ms. Mira Rampasad. Uh, and I will let you know, Ms. Rampasad is currently one of my favorite students of all time. We have a long and checkered history. <laughs> um, and so we want to, to let you know a little bit about uh, our program, the Labor Studies Program. Um, I want to thank you all for being with us here, both um, Ms. Rampasad and Mr. Duncan and everyone who is here with us um, online. Uh, I'm sure that you could be doing something else with your Friday evening, even under COVID conditions. But thank you for being here, and let's hope you get something that is of value to you uh, out of this evening's session. The first thing I'd like to do is to just talk briefly about the Labor Studies Program, what's in it, what you can get when you come here. Uh, I will just outline the program, and both Mira and Kilin will probably give you a little bit more detail as to what it actually feels like um, at the granular level on the ground or online as, as, it, as it is. Um, we have a variety of programs that starts from the absolute introductory level, the 10 Saturdays introduction into industrial relations, and then we have two short programs in industrial relations, our certificate in industrial relations and our diploma in industrial relations practice. And these um, two certificates are pitched at very different levels. The certificate in industrial relations is pitched at the entry level practitioner, the person who is getting into an IR HR department, who is getting into a trade union who, or who just has an interest in understanding how industrial relations works. The diploma, on the other hand, is for someone who is already in practice and would like to concretize their practice a little bit more, to lay a stronger foundation for, for what they are already doing in the field. Now, Beyond those programs, um, which are, well, 10 Saturdays and then two one-year programs, two semesters apiece, we have our um, associate degree in labor studies and then our bachelor degree in labor studies. The certificate in industrial relations is nested in the associate degree in labor studies. So if you do the certificate in um, industrial relations, you just have to do an extra year and you can matriculate upwards to the associate degree. Similarly, the associate degree is nested in our bachelor degree. And so again, all of the courses that you've done in, at both levels will be applied towards the higher degree. So you just build as you go along. Uh, the, Bachelor and associate degree, just like the certificate and diploma, are all terminal certificates, which means that you really don't have to go beyond them to be able to practice. They all give you the ability to practice in your field, to understand industrial relations, and at the higher levels, to understand the wider labor studies context. Our programs focus on building competencies. It's not just about getting a piece of paper. It's not just about passing an exam. We focus on building competencies. And this is one of the strengths of all of the labor study, all of the uh, Cipriani programs and the labor studies programs in particular. What you often hear out in the field is that people will tell you, 
students come from other programs, even with higher degrees, master's degrees, and simply do not understand the field of practice, simply do not perform as well as a Cipriani student who might come with a lower degree, such as a certificate, uh, um, diploma, or associate degree. Our degrees are so packed in terms of competency, uh, uh, so packed in terms of the knowledge that is imparted, that the students go out there able to hit the ground running and understand the areas in which they are operating. And a big reason for that is that most of our lecturers are steeped in practice themselves. They are practitioners in the field. They come to let you know exactly what is going on now in the field. They help you to understand the material theoretically, but then they are able to show you this is what happens in practice. And therefore, we are able to apply the material more effectively in the field, even to innovate as things change right in front of us. One of the, the most interesting things about the Labor Studies Program right now is the fact that we have a growing cohort of regional students. Due to our, our um, partnership with the Caribbean Congress of Labor, we have students that come from Grenada, from um, um, Bahamas, from Belize, or throughout the region. And we are doing, this has been happening for well, two years now, to the point where the first thing that my lecturers are asking is, where are our students coming from? How many regional students do we have? Give us a list, please. Because they have introduced a whole new dynamic into the courses so that the courses are now not simply learning about labor studies in Trinidad and Tobago or industrial relations in Trinidad and Tobago. The, the courses have a real regional flavor. It's comparative industrial relations. It's regional industrial relations. It's regional labor studies. And our labor studies uh, students from the region are actually forcing us to rethink the curriculum so that it admits them into the program as full-fledged stakeholders of our program. It's one of the most exciting things that is happening in the program right now. And it means that at the end of the day, our Trinidad and Tobago students will be regional practitioners as well, will have the ability to go out into the region to practice and not just be located in this um, isolated ecology of Trinidad and Tobago. Another important thing that is happening with the program is our research and publications uh, agenda. Cipriani is developing its research agenda. We are doing active research in many fields, such as the impact on COVID. We are looking at things like uh, social security, social protection. We have interest in just transitions. And the, the thing that what this means for you as a prospective student is that it is our intention to involve students in our research and publications agenda, have students participate in the research right along with us, and most importantly, have students publish publish in the news media, publish in journals. So this is going to be a change. It's something that we are planning. It hasn't happened yet, but this we intend to make real in the, in the next few years. And I think that as academics, this should be exciting for any student joining the program. Um, additionally, we are building relationships with regional and international institutions, such as the International Labor University, um, making it possible for our students down the road to have and enjoy articulation agreements, um, to be able to probably uh, enjoy uh, trips abroad in the region and to study abroad uh, in the future. It is our intention to do just that. Um, so we want to actually grow the program um, so that it is an international program and not simply a local program. And Another area that is very um, exciting in the, in the department that is um, spearheaded by one of our, our 
um, newest lecturers who is very gung-ho in this area, um, Ms. Uh, Janice Johnson Lord, our customized training portfolio where we are developing labor studies content, the content that is in the classroom, developing it for delivery to stakeholders, industry stakeholders um, who don't have the time to come into the programs but need to know what would help their practice in the short term. So these are the things that are available to you. Um, as a prospective student in, Cipri in uh, Cipriani College in the Labor Studies Department. But that's enough of the one. Let's look at the two. And I want to introduce to you our two student participants here um, today, Mr. Kern Duncan and Ms. Mira Rampasad. And I'd like um, each of them to tell us a little bit about themselves, give us a little bit about their background and how they ended up at Cipriani College. Um, if I can, uh, I will start with Ms. Rampasad with the anime eyes. Hello, and I once again, I am Mira Rampasad. Um, Mr. Daniel made it sound as if I'm playing me. I got into, I'm doing a bachelor's in labor studies and I got into back to my school because I did my first degree at Cipriani, it was an HR. And I will not um, go into my grouse against HR or anything, but I found that there was a need to learn and to know the implementation of the laws and no better place to be to do that to me than Cipriani. As a student who went back to school after many, many years, I had just done CXE and I went to Cipriani. It is, and I'm telling you this, and by no means is it, you know, I'm, yes, I'm biased to Cipriani, but um, <laughs> my lecturers there were the best and are the best. Um, they, they take you through, you know, if you're apprehensive, you know, you're scared, you're coming in after CXC, after so many years, we have children or whatnot, because we're adults going in here. And you don't know what to expect. And because, um, I mean, coming from CXC, from when I did, you know, those days we used to get licks and stuff, right? I mean, I don't expect to get licks as an adult, but, you know, here... Again, I didn't know what to expect, and it exceeded anything that I would have thought about. Um, I was able to graduate uh, with a degree in HR, and again, I came back to do labor. And what should take me five and a half years or five years will take me three and a half because I was able to get credits transferred and um, staff is so friendly. I mean, I wrote to exams yesterday, I got a response immediately. Um, it, I can't complain, I have nothing to complain about. And even if I did, they would have been hearing it in the corridors of Cipriani because I am just that loud. No, everybody know Mira Rampasad. And if I'm upset about something, believe you me and Mr. Daniel can tell you, they will all know. But Cipriani, um, if you're a potential, student logging on here and I hope there are potential students here it's a wonderful place to be it is we learn together we all learn together I'll hand over to Kern now okay good afternoon you all hearing me right yep all right Ma, my name is Kern Duncan I came into Cipriani in 2019 I was, uh, I am a teacher um, with the Union Trinidad and Tobago Unified Teachers Association. They have a scholarship program where they select every year participants to do um, courses in Cipriani, either in OSH or in labor. And I chose labor because I was more interested in, in that aspect, right? And we started in 2019, just before the pandemic, and the pandemic came in 2020. I think the pandemic may have um, probably hindered the experience at Cipriani a little bit, but it was still thoroughly 
enjoyable, right? I, was, I learned a lot in terms of um, labor issues that I could use in my profession as I like to say, nobody could pull wool over my eyes anymore because I, I am now versed in a lot of you know, labor issues and labor laws and you know, grievances and know how to handle grievances, right? The experience at Cipriani definitely was rewarding for me, even though it was challenging at a point in, well, most plenty of times it was challenging, but we did make it, we did make it true, right? Um, I have to, like certain lecturers, I think I just have to big up in that regard and Miss Lord, definitely, because she, I did the, every semester I had a course with her and every semester was, you know, was good and we, was successful in, in, in anything that we did. And what I liked about her, the courses that we did with her, we got a lot of hands-on um, experience, things that you might do if you were, if you were, were practitioners in the field. One of the things especially was the debate that we had to do, like when we did politics, right? And that was, I never thought I could have done that because when it was coming, I was like, how am I going to get through this? And somehow, some way, we did, right? And then we had the simulation was the other, other thing in the next politics course, which also, same thing, I wondered, what, it used to feel like, will we get through this? I mean, will it, will it be done? Will it be finished? And it, and it was, and it went very smoothly. And it was very enjoyable. So another thing I want to say, I didn't think that I would be studying again because before I came into Cipriani, I was like, I did enough studies in my life and I was done. I said, that was it. I have, I have, I have doing no more, but they encouraged me, the people in Twitter encouraged me, apply, apply, you will get through. And I did apply and I didn't regret it. I have no regrets at all because I definitely learned a lot, which will carry me forward in my teaching career and in other aspects of my life as well. And if anything, any opportunity um, raises itself later on. So the journey definitely was very rewarding for me and enjoyable. Okay, thank you, Mira. Tell me a little bit about some of your lecturers. Uh, Kern went on there. So what, what was your experience with, with your lecturers? Where do I start? I have been extremely blessed to get wonderful lecturers. I don't know where Mr. Daniel and the, the staff or the team find these people, but they are professionals. They are great. I love... I. I I love, and I'm saying this, Mr. Alva, and he is one of the best, like he literally like, um, and I'm going to share personal experience last year, I had some anxiety attacks and I, I just came, you know, I wasn't well and, you know, with this whole COVID and everything that is happening in the world, we are human beings, you know, we're students, we're, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a business owner. It, it was overwhelming and my body just crashed. And upon hearing this, my lecturers started calling. Mr. Daniel was one of them. My lecturers at Cipriani called and they were panicked and, you know, they were concerned and they just wanted to make sure that I was okay. And it had nothing to do. I mean, I had finished for the, you know, I was still in the semester. It was still going on. Um, but I think Mr. Alva didn't have an actual class with him. Um, no, I no, I had one class with him, and but he kept calling. I didn't have a class with Miss Janice, Miss Lord, and she as well called. Um, Miss Lord, I share in Kuhn's, um, you know, everything that he said about her. She pushes you to the next level. She, she, sh you know, there's the saying, "Iron sharpens iron," and it is so true because. She, she she pushes us she's like you have the potential you can do this this is what you need to do and she you know she just takes us to the next level and then we have you know we have professionals like um people coming out from the ministry you know to teach us we have i had uh, miss bundu um you know i've had um, a little fallout and you know but not really lecturer where you know I, it's just such a great experience like 
these people bring so much to the table, like their wealth of knowledge. Like I'm always excited for them to share something and you're always learning something. So, um, you know, case studies, it comes alive in the classroom. And I never thought I would get excited about studies. As Kern said, had enough, moving on, next stage in life. But I am excited. I'm excited. Um, so much so that I'm wondering if Cyprian is going to add a master's to our list because I don't want to go anywhere else. I want a master's program in Cipriani because I just love my lecturers and my school. <laughs> Thank you, Mira. Kern, can you talk about your experiences with any other lecturer other than uh, Ms. Lord? Yes. Um, when the pandemic hit, we, well, everything changed because we were physical mm -hmm. and then we had to go virtual. So one lecturer that I will I'd like to point out was Mr. Voshi, right? He, he was not someone who was so, you know, versed with the technology, right? But he was, he was able to catch it very quick and he stood the course with us, right? And continued to help in whatever way he said, call him. He, he wasn't, he wasn't so, you know, really with the email and all those things, but said, call him and get, you know, personal to get help, to get help when you need it. Right, so he was one definitely that stood out in terms of the assistance of students and making sure students, you know, cope with what's especially what was happening at the time because we all were unsure what happening. But he was there, to, the course continued, and we still, you know, persevered. Another lecturer as well was Mr. What's I forget his name now, the history teacher. I forget, I forget his name, sorry, sorry, but wow. yes, Mr. Vidal, right, and um, um he. Even though the, the, that course was was heavy, right? It I will say it, it did inspire me. He he inspired me to to you know to get a lot of books and do some reading on the history or the labor issues because I went actually researching in different different um um search engines with different books. Well, pirate search engines, um, and I got some books for free, right? <laughs> <laughs> I got some books for free and it really, I must say, it really did help me in terms of getting, you know, past, past, not only passing the course, but getting an A in that course and the information, I, I really got to read things that I didn't even know happened. So it, uh, he was definitely an inspiration for that, for allowing me to, you know, to, to research and to read more and to understand, you know, the history of the, in the Caribbean labor issues. I think okay. that's it. Yeah. All right. Um, but, you, but both of you raised a, a, an interesting point there. What was it like for you um, in the experience of us all going online, um, teachers and students, the college, the whole country going online for the first time? What was that experience like for you? Go with Mira first. I realized that. Started on muting already. <laughs> um, it was it was scary, physical paper, and I like to see a lecture in front of me, so I would be sitting with you know paper. Mm -hmm. I print stuff, and um, with everything locking down, I wasn't able to print. Wasn't able to do stuff, you know, like that, and it was a struggle. Um, for my now, I have a son in Cipriani. I my son is doing a degree at Cipriani. So he just when he was in his glee, he was in his bed with his phone doing classes. You know, I mean, taking notes on whatever. And I was sitting, struggling. I had I, he had to show me how to extend the screen on the television and do stuff. And um, it was a struggle at first. But we struggled together and I saw my lecturers struggle with me, but try with me. And Kern brought that up where Mr. Voshe. And I must say, I was impressed. I think Mr. Alva figured out the system before a lot of other students. Like at the end of class, we would see him sending the recording. I'm like, that was quick. You know, before the night was over, he would send the recording. I'm like, okay. And um you know, things. So some of them really did well. Um, some of us, you know, and we had to help each other. And that's what I love about Cipriani. 
we help each other a lot as students. We have each other's back. Kern and I were in a couple of classes together. And I remember him and another student, Ivy, big up to Ivy. She would assist us. She was like a big sister. You know, she would assist us. Where we were weak, she was strong. And that's what I love about Cyprian. That's what I love about our department. I, I could only speak about our department, the camaraderie, the working together. We are a team at Cipriani. And I thought about this today. You know, coming out of primary school, we all want to come first. You know, so we have to be better than everybody else. We have to be the best because there's only one first place. But at Cipriani, there is enough A's for mm. all of us. There is enough A's. And we work together as a team to ensure that we all get there. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. Okay. Um, Kevin, what was it like for you? It was hard at first because I think everyone was trying to get their bearings in terms of what they're going to do and how they're going to do it. But I think it definitely, I, I definitely did adjust to it. And maybe even say I did enjoy, you know, the, the being at home and learning at, learning at home. And I, plus it allowed me to, to actually, you know, revise and study probably a little more than mm -hmm. if I was, you know, the hustle and the bustle of having to go up the road and come down the road because I live in South and and Cipriani in Val staying there. So it definitely made things probably a little easier in, in, in terms of in terms of that and having more time to actually do do you know your studies and assignments, the many assignments that were given. But even though we got plenty of assignments, they, we we finish it. We make sure we make sure that we do they do what we had to do. Right. Yeah. But I think I adjusted I adjusted well even the lecturers as any well after a while they as, as well adjusted well. And the the whatever mistakes that were made in the beginning, I think that as was cleared up, right? Mm -hmm. And I think, especially now, I'm seeing too that the future now it's deep running into is growing because of the virtual realm, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's, as we see, as you said, with the regional students that are in the classes now, because I had some courses where the regional students would were in the classes, and I think that definitely added to the experience and to coping with this, you know, being the virtual space and in the pandemic. Well, I hope some of our virtual students, are, our, our, our regional students are with us now and, and prospective regional students are with us now. Um, tell us about that. What was it like sitting um, in class with, with regional students? The first thing I thought about was I have a place to go when I go for holidays. I'm going to make contact with these people. We're going to become fast friends and I have a place to stay. Um, but it was more than that. Um, in Mr. Boucher's class, I had a class with Mr. Boucher. We had, I met a lot of regional students. We have a WhatsApp group that was created in the class and we kept the WhatsApp group um, where we communicate from time to time. They're from different islands. And I don't know about you all, but I, I felt superior being from Trinidad and Tobago. And that's in that class, I got knocked down a notch because they're just as bright as me. They are super intelligent. We have nothing on them. We are on the same playing field. Um, it was incredible for them to share things that was going on as it was happening. Cause you know, there is so much that doesn't come over the news mm -hmm. and we can hear you know, first-hand experiences of what, what's going on on the ground, behind the scenes, uh, what's taking place in different countries. And as COVID was happening, we were able to hear from them what's going on, how they were coping, and all these things. So I love the fact that we have so much regional students now and um, knowing, like, you know, they'll be able to tell us about their laws, their industrial relation laws and their practices and what they do and their different cultures. So it was definitely a fantastic experience mm -hmm. cool. right i think it was a learning experience to have these regional students within the class because they may have had some ideas that we may not have thought about especially when it comes to group projects and those things so <laughs> they definitely contributed in that respect in terms of projects and you know information because we may not know about certain things but they they will know especially in the 
well, the politics course, right? We, we, had, had, we had to get information in terms of the different I, um, islands in, in the Caribbean, right? They, their contributions allowed me to see things that I didn't know existed, even though not all of them were in my group, but I was, yeah. would have noticed it in, the, in their own presentations. So that it definitely was a learning experience to have them. Plus, it also made some classes fun because a lot of the classes were either evening classes to cater for these um, regional students as well. And I must say, in one of the classes, it was I had a lot of, um, as we say, kicks in the class because of them, right? And it was really funny to hear the accents and things sometimes too. So they definitely made the classes, you know, in, a little more enjoyable too. So the experience was good. It was good to have them and. I'm glad that Cyprian is continuing on that train to have these um, people within the, the courses right now. You know, to them, um, we have accents, right? Yes, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd love for you all to tell us what you think about the content of your courses. You know, um, how good is the content? How significant was, was the the content of, of the programs of the various subjects that, that you had to deal with. Dylan was talking a little bit about the history. Um, so, so tell me about some of the things that you learned and, and how um, it affects you and your ability to operate in your fields. Mira. I hope you all can hear me clearly. My internet has been acting up. Um, am I coming over clear? Okay, great. Um, the content uh, earlier last year, um, and hello, I'm going to move to a better location. Um, can you go on to Kern? I'll come back on. All right, then, thank you. We'll do that. Yeah, well, we wait yeah. Yes, um, the content is, was it was heavy, but doable in terms of getting able to get through everything, right? Mm -hmm. And I definitely learned a lot from the the content in the labor courses. And there's some a couple of things that that stood out for me in terms of what we learned in the collective bargaining course. What one, of the, one of the things that we did was in course in the proposal when we have to do you know collective bargaining for the different unions and the government and who, or whoever the employer right so that definitely is one of the things that that i was very happy to learn because i because that is something you always see other people knowing how to do the costing and the proposal but you can't do it and you just have to watch what they're doing and that's you know but uh, but now i could do it so when they actually finally now, as I say, in March, they might start negotiations. I could actually help people to show, show them like, okay, this is this is what they're offering and we could calculate it for the, for, the, for the period of the three years. So I actually have a good knowledge of that. So that's one of the things that did stood out for me, right? Another one that stood out for me was also was the grievance handling course, right? That in my profession with the teachers, there are always, and any profession really, there are always um, grievances. So I think I am much more um, able to handle grievances if they if they have to come. Because previously, before I was in Cipriani, I was the staff representative for my staff in the school, right? Mm -hmm. But and I and most likely this year I'll be getting it back because I, I went back to school now. I I will we'll get it back. But even still, I always used to, I was always somebody who. People will come to for advice. Mm -hmm. always, the one teacher and staff always say, "I'm the go-to man," right? So, so I because I know about these things because uh, they ask me, "So what? What should I do here?" And then I will say, "No, the person can't. They can't do that just so." I mean, it ha there has to be a procedure, right? So, I I think doing that course as, as well, the grievance handling, that definitely helped me as well in getting you know being more confident and knowledgeable in in handling those situations in my job, right? So overall, I would say, well, those are the two things that I say stood out for me in terms of what I remember and what I in what I did in, in the content, but the content definitely was helpful and you really wouldn't go, go wrong because these things, I am so glad that I did 
do the, do, do the program and was able to cover the things like this. What does, did history do for you, Kurt? I mean, a, a lot of people come into Cipriani and, and ask, why am I doing history? I'm coming here to do industrial relations. Why am I doing history? I think the history allows us to see that right now we actually probably repeat it. History is repeating itself, right? Because we are not seeing the, impo the importance of um, the labor unions, right? And they are actually being well being, you know, shut out and being mistreated at this point in time. And history, if you look back, if you go back and you read the, all the history that went on, this, this is actually nothing new. It has been happening for the longest while. And it seems that the, some that the powers that be have not learned from the history, right? So that is why I think that, is, that was an important um, course that we did to be able to see that history, it really always repeats itself. But we also need, besides repeating itself, we need to learn from the lessons from before in order to move forward. And if, if we are not learning, we will continue the, at the same way and it will keep happening. So that's why that course, I think, was really one of us, was good to, to have on the, you know, the content, yeah. Okay. So Mira is back with us. Tell us about the content. What, what, what are your impressions of the content of your, your bachelor program? It is very strong. Um, and it's relevant into what, what is happening today. The IRA comes to life in the classroom and it's not where we are sent to learn, you know, go read the IRA, go read this, go. We take it apart in the classroom. We take apart the laws. We take apart the acts in the classroom and we put it into everyday practice. We, we do case studies. So, it's so funny, last year, and I was telling you all this before my internet started giving trouble. Um, last year, a prominent hotel in Trinidad and Tobago decided to furlough employees. And I'm talking about employees with 30 years service. And we know that furlough is an American terminology and not recognized by our, our IRA. And um, these one of them, because I had done an internship and I worked at Hilton for a time. Oh, shocks. <laughs> leave it to me. Leave it to me to say it. Leave it to me. We're still there. <laughs> Goodness. Anyway, so anyway, so I had worked there for a time and um, the workers were aware and contacted me. Um, this is their way that I'm doing the uh, the, the labor studies at this point in time. And they said, Mira, we need some advice. And I was able to give them some advice. I was able to reach out to lecturers, um, you know, talk to some lecturers, get some advice for them and start things going with them on the correct. So for content, I think, and I know, not I think, I know that as soon as I've graduated, I can hit the ground running. That's how strong the content is, that we are ready to be practitioners in this field. The moment that we have that degree in our hand, we're like, we're ready. I know the laws. I'm good. I'm good. We're solid. Because at no point in time do we ever leave that classroom not understanding what is taught or not understanding we are asked. And uh, anytime a student leaves and say, I don't understand, that's on them. It's not, and I'm saying it as a student, it's on them, not the lecturer, because I've had experience where we stayed back way beyond the classroom a lot of time, just getting an explanation because one student didn't understand. Mm -hmm. So in that aspect, fantastic. Mm -hmm. And what about, um, well, just like we turn the history, what about the courses that aren't labor studies? What about the economics and and the politics and the critical thinking uh, and and the, the 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 writing courses. How how do you feel about that kind of content as well? When I started um, my first degree in Cipriani, I did not see a link because you know when we when we at secondary school, the writing and the mathematics, the social studies, the agri science, the geography, it has no link. The hmm. separate subjects, and when you come in. I had a separate notebook for everything. And mm. I, in my first year, it was 2008. And everything that it took me two years for it to connect, that everything connects. So with this degree, I wasn't making that mistake. Everything connects. 
there's a connection with everything. The history teaches us, lays the foundation to where we, from where we came from to where we are today. And for instance, the I don't know if um, a lot of people are aware of this, but I learned this in history that that fortnight pay that is kept inside for government workers, for those who are daily rated, fortnightly paid workers that is kept inside was from the apprenticeship period. So that they will keep you and bound you to the system. You ain't going to leave two weeks pay inside. You walk out of that job. You're not going to leave that there. That's important. You work for that. And that two weeks was from then. So how many hundred years later? What is it? 200 years later from freedom. We still here. You know, we still here where you all keep in two weeks pay inside. And um, I know we, do, we want to be politically correct and diplomatic and everything here. But that's relevance. We where we came from, where we at, how much progress we made, how much we gave up, how much we're still giving up. And it's relevant. Writing skills, well, we would be handing in stupid research papers if it wasn't for writing skills. Um, we need it. Economics, wow. I learned about um, balance of payments. People will be like, what's balance of payment? We're talking import, export. We're talking labor. We, it was so fantastic. I remember I, I chose to do two economics course. I did five subjects one semester as a part-time student, which is not supposed to. I pushed myself to the extreme, and I remember getting a call from my HOD, Mr. Daniel. And um, he's like, Mira, you like math? And I was like, no, not really. He's like, but you're doing two economics course. And I was like, so I can handle it. And at the end of that semester, I had five A's. I had five A's. And it's because my lecturers explained everything as if I, it was ABC. We went from ABC. You're not, not because you don't know about economics. You'll be left stranded. No. Mm -hmm. Our lecturers teach you every single thing. And it is phenomenal. And I want to give a shout out to the um, general ed department and uh, Dr. Khan for the work that they do in supporting all our students in, in every program in, in that kind of foundation, mathematics, English, critical thinking, um, without which, you know, our programs would, would seriously flounder. Um, and that, that foundation is, is, is very important in all of our programs. Um, Can I just add, add to that in terms of the other? Okay. Right. Um, one of the things with, as, as Mira, Mira said, it is connected because like when we did communications, that definitely helped in terms of us getting that confidence to have presentations. Right, and because a lot of times you have presentations to do in the different courses, so communications mm -hmm. definitely was one of the things that helped in getting you to know how to present and to present properly, right? Mm -hmm. And also another course um, that we did the the fundamental well, writing course. We have a lot. Of, we always have a lot of um, essays or something to do to, to write. So mm -hmm. things that you probably took, took for granted before and you forgot back in primary school and secondary school, now it, it came back and you were able to to have you know proper essays and proper writing material because these courses definitely helped in getting that back, getting you back to that level that it is acceptable to uh, university well tertiary education standard. All right, we have a question from a regional student um, and it goes, as a returning regional student, does the labor relations course content help one to be able to apply the material to the different jurisdictions, given that I assume is based on law or on Trinidad and Tobago law? Um, and, and that's a good question. And the, the answer was, is that, listen, when we did the, the, the course content originally, the course outline, so it, it was based on the Trinidad and Tobago experience. But from the first day the regional students walked in, every lecturer started going, we need to get the laws from all of the countries that the, that the regional students are coming from. We can't teach Trinidad and Tobago to someone from, uh, from Antigua or from Grenada or Bermuda or Belize 
we, you know, it just doesn't work. And we have to be able to give equal ground to the experience of all of those countries. And, and lecturers have started um, saying, look, in our assessment, we have to ask students to speak not to our experience, but to their experience. So we are building our library of the, the legislative framework for the entire region. And we are going to amend course outlines to reflect that our courses are not regional courses and not local courses anymore. Even if we have something that starts uh, from Trinidad and Tobago, it must offer a comparison to the to the other regions. Was that your experiences in 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 the classes, Turn and and, and Mira? Yes, it was. Um, we started and we started doing things um, Trinidad, and then we went and everybody had to share. And I think I would have touched upon it when we were talking about regional students. Um, you know, they would start talking, and our lecturers incorporated a lot of different laws you know i mean fundamentally we were in the caribbean we were all coming out of the british rule we're all um you know mm -hmm. some of our laws are very similar some have evolved phenomenally in the caribbean apparently i i will we're lagging behind in a few of our acts <laughs> and um you know they actually brought us to shame in a few when we found out what they had with us what we had we were like okay mm -hmm. and um so yeah, so knowing that, I mean, law, you know, the basics that we did, you know, natural justice, all these things are the same, you know. Um, so it was just comparative and our lecturers did really go, as a student, I can, I can vouch for that, that they went the extra mile, they started stretching themselves, they started saying, you know, we need to incorporate this. I remember in one class with Miss Lord, we brought up, it was the beginning of COVID and we were talking about breaking of contracts and whatnot. And she went, it wasn't even any course outline and mm -hmm. went on to explain things, you know, because a student wanted an explanation. And she went on to explain it again equally. So all my lecturers, I've seen them done that, you know, you have a question, even if it's not any course outline, it's still relevant to industrial relations. We're going to work it through. We're going to go through it. People have shared so much so as they were telling there's so much things happening on the job right now and lecturers were able to help students are able to help students with their experience they were able to advise students on what to do and they were able to even say they even when the extra man say well hold on when everybody has left you stay back and i will assist you so yeah lecturers are stretching themselves our school is evolving and i love it um, you know, I, I wish we could go from regional to international, you know, perhaps that's the next move, you know, but um, Cipriani, we have our own little uh, place in this world. We're very unique. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I, I hate the term regional. I think it's another country, it's a sovereign nation, therefore it's, re it's international, you know, but anyway, Kern, what about you? What, what was it, again, re returning to the experience of having um, the regional students in the class and the way in which the course the courses are, are literally evolving um, you know day to day to, to become comparative um, courses rather than Trinidad and Tobago courses. Yeah I think it did start to, to evolve because in different um, courses we had to get well we, we, we were able to be able to get different examples coming out from the different countries. Right. Mm -hmm. And realizing that we realizing that some of the things were not really on the, the you know the course outline, but we had we did touch on it because it was relevant to what we were talking about. So I definitely think that some things are well, that we are changing and it will, well, as you said, you all are looking that looking to add these the the different laws and stuff from the different islands to the content, right? And I think it's a good idea. Is that it will also allow you know the Trinidad people to even probably branch out to, to other countries if they want to probably go in another country to probably to practice what they are, they did learn. So mm -hmm. I think it's a good idea, and I, I definitely think it, it was impacting on the courses in terms of the experience of the the students from the regional countries. So yeah, I think it's yeah it's a good idea to 
to move forward that way. Okay. And, and I, the, I want to ask you about the significance of, of doing labor studies, um, you know, as, as, a, as a degree or as a certificate. I mean, you could, you're a teacher, working teacher, Mira, um, right out of, of HR and an entrepreneur. What's the significance of doing labor studies? A lot of people tell me, well, if I'm not a trade unionist, then, then this don't make any sense at all. I starting with Kern this time, Mira. <laughs> Right. Well, the significance for me at well at the moment, which could also always change, um, it definitely helps me in terms of being in the union that I am in right now. Right, it it allows me to be able to you know to advance in the union if I do desire to do to do that. Right, to advance in the union based on you know my knowledge of the different laws and the procedures and rules and all these things that we did cover in the course content, right? It allows me to be able to, to be um, even a teacher of the, of the content because I am able to help other people who may, may not know a lot of these things, but because I am knowledgeable, I'm able to pass on that knowledge to them, right? One of the things somebody has always tell me, I, I, one of my friends will say, well, now it, well, after doing that, it could be a, 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 a IR consultant, right? So I'm not saying it wouldn't happen, but it, it, I, it, it can, yeah. So that is also something that some people could, could branch off to when they, after they finish. And it actually, especially now, an IR consultant will make, makes a lot of money because there are a lot of IR issues going on now. So... I would say the significance is it's really it's really big, right? Mm -hmm. You can really, you can get get in yourself into a lot of different avenues, right? It's just where your passion, it's just where your passion, where, what it is you want to do. So yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Mira, how significant is industrial relations is labor studies today? Right. I have seen too many HR practitioners breach the law to please management. And it costs, at the end of the day, it boils down to money. And it costs money to be in breach of the law. You have to pay. I've seen too many poor decisions. In 2019, I worked for a company. And please, Lord, let me don't forget, don't call the people name. So I, <laughs> I worked for a company in South and um, my manager, she had a master's and everything, and she had kept asking. She said, Mira, how long is the maternity leave? And I said, it's 14 weeks, ma'am. Um, I'm saying ma'am because I don't want to call her name. Um, so I said, it's 14 weeks. She's like, are you sure? I was like, yes. She, a week later, she asked me again. I decided to print it out for her. I printed it out. I highlighted it. She said, you know, you keep it because I'm going to ask you in a month anyways, because I'll forget. And I thought, oh, my goodness, you have a master's and you can't remember 14 weeks for maternity leave. Not only that, you're a woman. That might sound really sexist at this time, but can't we remember 14 weeks, which is not enough um, bonding time? And that's another grievance. I'll, we'll have to do a whole thing on, on that the next time. Um, but... Um, yeah, it's very significant. It is significant because everything in today's world boils down to dollars and cents. And we have to know the law. It is very important because a practice is not law. A law is law. And sometimes they do what's best for them and their best interests and their... No, your company policy is not the law. It does not supersede the law of the land. Let us be clear. So while you might feel that, you know, your Lord and master in your workplace, we have laws in Trinidad and Tobago and in every, in every country of the world, there is laws that protect the rights of workers. Let's get with it. So as for relevancy, oh goodness, it couldn't have been more relevant. Okay, so this is a, a, a safe zone or a quasi-safe zone, or however you want to look at it. Um, yes, that was for you, Kurt. Um, and, and so while we've had a, a really nice um, love fest here, I, I want to end by asking you, 
what would you like to see added to the program? What would you like to see maybe done differently in the program uh, as we continue to evolve going forward? I'll go back to Mira first. <laughs> I thought it would have time. You're, you're still in, in school, so be careful what you say. Go ahead. No, right? Um, no, so I, at this point in time, I can't imagine anything. I think perhaps uh, because of the regional students, I think perhaps we can add a comparative um, practice, uh, a law, like we can have a subject, you know, like how we do uh, take a part of our IRA. Um, you know, with our grievance practice and all these things, we really go through it. I mean, I know, you know, I read chapter five, grievance and all these things. I think we should incorporate something, a few that's really, um, you know, dominant people who come in a lot. Like we have a lot of, if we have a lot of people from Grenada, we have Barbados, we have, let's say Jamaica, we have, let us in incorporate their um, IR, you know, um, I want to, I don't know what the word is. Their, their laws um, in it and perhaps we do a comparative mm -hmm. um, something along that. That's the only thing I can think about. I'm sure when I go to bed tonight, I'll think about a million things, which I will be emailing it to you. But as for now, I can't remember. But we do have a comparative legal framework course, you know. I think the thing though is to build the comparison into all of the courses and not just to locate them in, in one section. You know? That's correct. That's yeah. good. We do because I mean I know we go through it in different subject areas. We do touch on it, but I think more in depth because they're here and they're here to stay, and we're going to build on it much mm -hmm. more. Um, that's the only thing I think at this point in time we're lacking. Um, and, and the reason I'm saying that is so that we in Trinidad can pick up ourselves and go to one of these lovely islands and mm -hmm. live happily ever after. Mm -hmm. You know, I, especially seeing that me a Motley one, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm going, I have miles. Yeah. What about you? I'm also a bit lost because I think the, the content is, is strong enough already. Um, but I will agree with that, with the more looking to, to bring in more of the regional um, issues and stuff that's going on to the content. Um, but I'm also thinking about to maybe having previous well, graduates that have been successful or, um, in, the, in their um, respective fields, right? So maybe they'll come and do some probably guest lecturing, maybe that, that is something that you all could do, guest lecturing for different courses and probably just as a week or we could came here and share our, our experience, that could be something incorporated as well within the, the, the courses in terms of probably getting people to train and for train the, the students for different tech presentations that they may have, right? Mm -hmm. So that is something that could be, probably be done, you know, going forward. Okay. Well, thank you, Mira. Thank you, Kern, for sharing your experiences with us. It was an enjoyable conversation. We could probably go on like this um, forever, but it is Friday and people probably want to go do other stuff. So thank you both for being here with us and thank all of you who were online with us. Remember, this is a fast evolving point in our history. Uh, things were changing already. COVID came and hit the, the light speed button on change. Um, we are finding that we have to do things differently, and we're finding a myriad uh, set of challenges um, that are facing us in the world of work and in the world of representing um, working people, representing uh, people in society. And so, I want to invite you to come and become a part of our Cipriani College family, part of our labor studies family. We're not just trade unions um, in practice. We are learning to represent working communities, working people. We are working towards the empowerment of working people through trade unions, and cooperatives and civil society organizations 
and through individual endeavor as well. And we would love for you to uh, be a member of our family. Look for us on, on um, Facebook and all the different um, social media. Look for us online. Um, ask a question. We'd love to answer your questions and invite you to come and sit with us in any of the various capacities that we train in, that we, that we uh, offer to our public. So once again, thank you all for being with us this evening. And I hope I meet you virtually or um, live at some point in time. Take care, everyone.